Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Friday, the 18th of September. For our Jewish friends and neighbors, this is Rosh Hashanah, the celebration of the Jewish New Year. To them we would bid uh, Shana Tov, and uh, we, uh, we welcome you this evening to our evening prayer. Today we are observing, and this is a long title, I want to be sure I say it right, the Feast of the Founders, Benefactors, and Missionaries of the Anglican Church of Canada. And if that seems to be a long title to you, think of all that I might do with it. There's enough material there to be a full university course, and we'll try to squeeze it into the few moments that we have. So let's begin our prayers now. Uh, I'm Jim Gary. I'm one of the honorary associates at the Church of the Ascension in London, Ontario. And so we pray. O oh Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy to be praised at all times by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 89, and we will be using just the first four verses of that psalm. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. And our psalm prayer. Remember us, gracious God, whom we cannot see your way and purpose, and renew in us the joy of your kingdom of light and light. Life, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our scripture this evening comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, and I will be reading verses 31 to 38. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap, to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the inspiration of our hearts be worthy and in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's another nice day, seems to be quiet in the neighborhood, and I've gone to the front porch again. And behind me, you can see a paper birch tree. An arborist told us that that is probably one of the oldest paper birches in uh, the north end of London. Could be as old as 50 years old, which causes me to think that somebody planted that many years ago. And yet, we enjoy its shade to today. 
It reminds me of how, when I was seven years old, I, with my step-grandfather, planted a maple tree. Well, he did most of the work, but I helped in the digging and straightening it while he put the dirt back in. And that was just a little tree, and it grew to be a huge and mighty maple tree, and it was just cut down a few years ago. Uh, it, uh, it's remarkable, the many people who, uh, for whom that tree gave shade over the years. And I was thinking also of, uh, of this day, I have had grapes to eat that came from the Vineland uh, Growers Cooperative in Jacob, uh, in St. Jacob Station, Ontario, but I also had a banana, and that banana had been harvested in Guatemala. And to think that our food can come from that many different and diverse places. And we have not done the work to plant it or to harvest it or to bring it to us. But it has come to us because of the labor and the work of others. Jesus' sayings about one sowing and another reaping speaks to us heavily of the history of the church. So much that we have today has been provided for us by others who have gone before us. And so in our church calendar, this day is set aside for what many might call Founders Day, a day to remember the founders, the benefactors, and the missionaries of the Anglican Church of Canada. And as I said at the outset, today would be a day for quite a long history lesson, a whole history course, I do believe. In this case, I would say that our history goes all the way back to the first apostles because the Anglican Church holds as one of its tenets what is known as apostolic succession. That is, the historic episcopate goes back to those first apostles. The Anglican Church of Canada itself has its roots in the Church of England, which in turn separated from the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century. Influenced by the Protestant Reformation, the new English church simplified the rituals and introduced in 1549 the Book of Common Prayer, which enables services to take place in English instead of Latin. That 1549 edition was revised in 1552, both at the hands of Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury. And while the Book of Common Prayer has gone through many revisions over the years, including the 1959 and 1962 editions, which became the official prayer books. We'll pause a second while the jet passes over. As I was saying, the uh, Book of Common Prayer in Canadian form uh, was done in 1959 uh, and then approved for official use in 1962. And then we have the Book of Alternative Services, which I am holding here, which uh, was essentially based upon the Book of Common Prayer uh, and drew from many sources, heavily still dependent upon the liturgies of Cranmer, but drawing also from Roman Catholic, Lutheran, and Orthodox service, uh, sources. The, uh, as we talked about not long ago, it was in the year 1578 that the first Anglican Eucharist was celebrated in Canada on the shore of Frobisher Bay near the present day town site of Iqaluit. And the church grew. The church grew from that time it grew because missionaries came primarily from England to, uh, to serve the people here. Military chaplains came with British garrisons and they helped spread the word here. And then immigrants came from Great Britain and a large influx of loyalists came up from south of the border after the American Civil War. And on this day in 1893, the first General Synod of the Church of England in the Dominion of Canada closed its deliberations with the service of thanksgiving because that became the birth of 
an indigenous Anglican church in Canada, that is to say indigenous to this continent, uh, a homegrown church, if you will. Previously, there had been three separate Anglican provinces in Canada, each a part of the Church of England, and having no direct relationship with one another except through the Church of England and the worldwide Anglican Communion. Certainly, there was informal contact back and forth, but it was in 1893 that the Church of England in the Dominion of Canada, often shortened to be simply the Church of England in Canada, came into being. The title, The Anglican Church in Canada, was first authorized by General Synod in 1955. In the Diocese of Huron, I would say that two names stand out and that we should want to remember. The first would be Benjamin Cronin, who was elected bishop in 1857, the first bishop of the Diocese of Huron, and he needed to go to London, England to be consecrated as bishop. He was the last Canadian bishop required to make that journey across the ocean to be consecrated in England. From that point on, Anglican bishops in Canada were consecrated in Canada. He built St. Paul's Cathedral, essentially. And then the second bishop of the Diocese of Huron was Isaac Helmuth, who was originally elected bishop coadjutor uh, and then uh, became bishop at the retirement of Bishop Cronin. He was born in Poland. Bishop Helmuth's father was a rabbi, and he also became a rabbi. He then traveled to England. He began to read and learn about the Anglican Church and became dissatisfied with his position within the Jewish faith, and he converted to Anglicanism. Along with Bishop Cronin, Bishop Helmuth founded Huron College, uh, which would become a part of what was called Western University in London, Ontario. And then, of course, you know it was known as the University of Western Ontario, and how all these things come back around. It's recently been rebranded as Western University. Uh, so what else is new under the sun? And, of course, Huron College, uh, which formed the basis of uh, Western, uh, became its own school, uh, Huron College, then Univer Huron University College. Many others build up the churches, the camps, the schools in this diocese and in many dioceses across Canada, and we remember all of them and the parts they played, in addition to the priests, the deacons, the wardens, and the members of those parishes and those service agencies and those camps and those, those colleges, uh, all played a part in the growth of the Anglican Church of Canada. And we, on this Founders Day, as I called it, need to honor every one of those. Speaking specifically of the Church of the Ascension, it was founded in the living memory of most of us, and uh, many remember those days of merger and planning to, to bring it about. And we think also of the four founding parishes which came together, and the years that they go back, and the many who were involved in those parishes over the years. This is a day, truly, to remember the, the founders, the benefactors, and the missionaries who have made possible the Anglican Church of Canada, which we now know. And we give our thanks to God for each of them and the part that they played. And thanks also to ourselves for our offerings and our service, which have enabled the church to continue in our communities to this day. May God bless us on our pilgrimage together as God's people in this land, and in this community. Amen. Our collect for this day. Almighty God, we remember all you, your faithful servants who labored in this church to preach and establish your word and to nurture your people in the ways of holiness. 
Grant us so to tend the heritage which you gave them grace to secure, that we may become true partakers with them in the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the colleagues for this week, Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you, in a moment of silence, to offer the prayers of your hearts and minds, as today we especially remember the founders, benefactors, and missionaries of the Church. And now, in the language and form of your choosing, I invite you to join with me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and those we love and those that we would pray for now and always. Amen. And now let us go in peace. May the God of peace go with us. Amen.